Hey, this is Andrew Aversa with Impact Soundworks, and today I'll be demonstrating how I made an epic track using our newest sample library, Furia Staccato Strings. Furia, as the name suggests, is a library devoted to staccato strings. Uh, it's an orchestral ensemble library. All the players played in unison, and we have an ensemble size ranging from one times 22 players all the way up to eight times 22 players, which is 176 players. That's pretty big. Uh, the user interface is very streamlined and simple. Uh, you have a simple mic mixer, a volume envelope, as well as ensemble timing and sample offset controls, plus a bonus little effects rack. This is something we just developed for this library, and we're gonna be using this with even more modules in future libraries, so that's pretty cool. Uh, before we go any further with the library, let me play the track from start to finish so you can hear what it sounds like. So this is Our Immortal Souls. <laughs> So that's the track, pretty cool. It was designed to be very epic, cinematic, over the top. You know, something that you might hear at a modern film trailer or as a uh, maybe a main theme to a big blockbuster movie. So let's go back and break down some of the elements used. One thing you'll notice all over the track, so I'm just gonna say this now, uh, is our library Juggernaut Cinematic Electronic Scoring Tools. So there's just a ton of sounds from Juggernaut here. Basically, almost all of the impacts, the reverses, the sweeps, it's just, just about all Juggernaut. So for example, this drop here, various impacts like this, or this, here. Transitions like these. And then later on, some of the really big builds, we have an impact that's being reversed here, and a riser. That's also Juggernaut. And then a lot of the big hits that you hear, like towards the end, for example, so we've got this one, Mega Thunder, and then these two. So basically just tons of Juggernaut all over the place. Uh, it's a great library for these big uh, cinematic sounds. There are also some rhythms used. Uh, some of them are from libraries that we didn't develop because uh, we don't have libraries like that, certain acoustic rhythms. But then we have some stuff from uh, Reforged Cinematic Metallic Percussion. Great library for, uh, it's got tons of different design rhythms. It's also got natural impacts, that sort of thing. Uh, but anyway, so let's, let's check out Furia. So here we have the opening pattern. And if we look at the settings, we're using an ensemble size of two. So that's two times 22 players for a total of 44 players. As you increase the ensemble size, you get a little bit more uh, timing slop. Uh, so beyond a certain point, you know, if the difference between two, four, six, eight ensemble size, it's not as dramatic as you'd expect because all the bows aren't happening at the exact same time. But speaking of bows, you can actually change that using the sample offset and ensemble timing settings. So let me play a little bit. Okay, so you're really hearing all the bow noise on each sample. On the other hand, if we were to increase this 
to, uh, let's say, 30 milliseconds, this is pretty aggressive, a lot of that bow noise is going to get chopped off. That's much more aggressive, and it allows you to play or sequence on the beat, but you're missing maybe a little bit of that, uh, that life to the samples. And you can turn this way up. I don't really recommend doing this because then it starts to sound a bit mechanical, but if you're layering with other sounds, uh, other parts of the orchestra, that may be okay. Uh, it's just a nice option to have. Again, I recommend keeping it more in the maybe five to 15 range. By the way, any glitches, cracks, pops, that's just because I'm recording 1080p video. The library itself is pretty lightweight. As you can see, it's only about 127 megabytes in RAM. And if you use the full ensemble size and various effects from the rack, obviously it's gonna use more CPU. Checking out the mic positions, uh, I've disabled the reverb that I had on the whole track. This is now just internal to Furia. Uh, let's check out just the close mics. Generally, you would want to have some hall mics in there unless you want to use your own external reverb. So turn this up, and then we get. That's also with 100% width, so if we turn this down, it's a bit more of a natural stereo. You can shape the envelope of the sound, which is very useful. So if we wanna have almost no attack time, or make the sample even tighter by turning this decay way down. as well as the release. That's almost like a spiccato sound. Okay, moving on after the intro, we have the build, which is where most of the percussion comes in. So what's going on here? These toms are actually from Shredded Drums, which is another library that we did this year. And uh, I like these because they have some great roundness, they have good punch, not too much reverb, uh, so they fit well in the track when layered with the other percussion that we have going on. Some big Tycho's there. And then we have uh, Rototoms there. The bass that comes in is a juggernaut bass, believe it or not. So that's a little known thing, or rather, I think it's an underused thing in our juggernaut library. There's those cool uh, bass sounds in the bass juggernaut patch. I like this one, the chaotic bass, because it has uh, not very much mid frequency. It doesn't get too muddy, uh, but it has that crunch in the high end that's just sort of built into the sound. And then we've got more transitions, even more build. You can see there's another Furia that comes in. By the way, I really should label my tracks. I apologize. So I have that on a separate track because that has just slightly different mixing internally. Also coming in here is uh, Pearl playing just low piano chords, really simple. Not exactly virtuosic, but it does the job of reinforcing that low end. For the transition here, as we get into the big section, what's happening, uh, we have a buildup with Furia. And there's a little bit of automation here, and that is actually a mod wheel automation because the mod wheel controls the amount of brightness. So that's great if you want it to uh, go from a low dynamic to a high dynamic. Uh, in addition to velocity, you can do that too, as if the players are really, really building up in intensity and so forth. So we've got that. We've got the aforementioned risers going on here. Uh, this is from a library called Leviathan by Black Octopus, which is actually it's made for EDM dance music, but I'm a big fan. Uh, it's got lots of cool transition sounds and, of course, drums. 
then the big sweep, and then we've got the drum kits and everything hitting here. That's, you know, those big drums are primarily shreddage there, the toms, snares, and so forth. And then the, uh, the refrain, so to speak, comes in. Most of this is uh, stuff that we've seen before. So we've got Pearl. Got some extra acoustic percussion going on there, some crashes. Ah, yes, so here we've got some. These are all from Juggernaut as well. This is percussion, electronic percussion from Juggernaut, the enormous bass drum. These rototoms, they're mixed really low. They're not really doing much, so I could just mute them. The main thing is that sort of big snare, which is technically a bass drum, but it's just been EQ'd quite a bit. So if we were to look at the EQ for this, channel 31, you can see uh, I really high passed it quite severely. And then again, reducing the bass. So it's more like a, you just get that splash from it. And that's also being layered with this mega thunder. For the next part, as the chords begin to change, uh, I have a little bit of Vocalisa being used. That's our choir library. So uh, in essence, this is a big Impact Soundworks showcase. I'm not really sequencing this in any sort of legato way. This is mainly for texture. I could have made the notes flow together a bit more but uh, for the purposes of this track, really all I wanted was just that uh, that vocal pad sound. So it's not really meant to sound fluent and, and flowing from one note to the next. But I am using the ma articulation here, the vowel. I've got the full choir as well as the sopranos layered on top, plus the soprano soloist. <laughs> And what you're gonna start hearing is our bravura scoring brass library come in. As the strings are, you know, chugging away. We've got those strings and then there's an additional string layer that comes in in this part of the song. Lots of uh, round robins recorded with this library. And as you increase the ensemble size, what it actually does is it pulls in those round robins as well as surrounding zones to simulate a bigger ensemble. But anyway, so moving on to the brass again. So we've got Furia there, which is providing those epic stabs. And then we have a huge layer of brass from Bravura, actually layered with some synths for even more punch. So we've got a solo French horn, piccolo trumpet, and ensemble trombones. So there's a big layered melody happening it's like uh wow it's like two octaves worth of melody it's very very layered and dense quite a bit more stuff here going back to this instance we've got the ensemble french horns and i believe there's ensemble trombones playing a different note trumpets and low brass so uh, pretty much the full brass ensemble here as well if we just solo that We've got some synths happening here too. There's a low bass synth through uh, Serum. And then there's a sort of 80s brass synth being layered on top. And that's really inspired by Crimson Tide. I really like that kind of brass sound where it's uh, it's real brass layered with synth brass. So if, if we just use Bravura, this is what it sounds like. In context, uh, you know, it really sounds great. It adds all this extra power to the track. There's also some additional bass layers happening, if you can believe that. That cool uh, gated brass is from Zebra 2. Deep Blue Glitch here is providing the gating effect. It's a great free VST plugin. So if I mute that, 
it's just a big synth layer. So this gives it the motion. And just tapering the high end there. And so uh, the track plays through. We've got the, the double furious string layer. We've got additional percussion. We've got all the Brevere brass, Juggernaut hits, the Tycho's going on. Uh, this is another layer that gets added. This is another kick from Juggernaut, the uh, Crush Explode. The cool thing about Juggernaut's percussion, because it's all synthetic, uh, tends to have a lot of punch. You know, acoustic drums don't always have that unless they're significantly processed. Because these were all synthesized, you get this uh, nice transient on everything. And then again, this one is scooped, a little bit of high pass, and then boosting up those highs. So here's the end part again. <laughs> And that final chord is just pretty much all the synths and the brass and everything just hitting one note. I really did have fun writing this track. Uh, it's, it's extremely over the top. It's very epic with the percussion and the bass and the acoustic instruments. But I think it's a pretty cool showcase of Furia. Last but not least, we do have an extras page on here. And this is just sort of for advanced users. You can control the extent to which velocity impacts volume and brightness. So if we turn this up more. You can really get that subtlety from the low velocity playing all the way to the high velocity. There's also this uh, max round robin control, which goes from 8 to 16. Uh, basically, the round robins from 9 to 16 have a little bit more life in the sample, so to speak. And what I mean by life is, for example, maybe a little bit of extra string noise or maybe the players weren't 100% totally bowing at the same time. If you have a big ensemble setting, like you know, you're know, you using 5, 6, 7, 8, I would increase the round robins so you get even more variation. 